Sorry, go on, Mike, tell about your support scheme. Um, the Department of Transport have issued a guidance document um, to lads working in the maritime industry doing uh, anti piracy stuff. And what it says is that they should be trained in use of force. Um, and the documentation I've seen so far is all geared around military white card um, rules of using force, which in my opinion, if, if what it says is if you work for a UK company on a UK flagship, then you come under UK law. Right. So to my mind, that is um, the law and legislation um, relations to use of force and health and safety and everything else that, that goes with it. And that a proper uh, risk assessment process is done and all the, all the foreseeable risks uh, are addressed. So, um, and, and, and as we know, a sound audit trail in who has delivered the, the training in relation to use of force. So what training are they getting currently? Well, what they're getting currently, in, 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 a, in a summary, is, is sort of, um, if you feel threatened, you can fire, you can fire warning shots. There's no documentation I've seen so far, or training delivered by companies, that talk about the actual law or the power that, that you've got with, to take another person's life. So in terms of control and management then, in, of, of what force operatives say on a maritime ship are going to use, it's pretty much subjective and it's relying on the, on the training and experience the guys have had in, in former occupational lives. Correct. And, and from what I've seen, the, the, the issue is, is that um, most of these guys are ex-military and have come from you know, operational theatres. And if the Department of Transport are saying this is the guidance, then like all, all the other organisations regarding use of force, the law applies. But on, in, in these circumstances, the, the use of force option that they've got is a lethal one. Well, when I was interviewing Michael Mansfield QC a while ago, one of the things he raised about the use of force was the planning and control, which was an issue that was raised in the McCann case. Remember that the death and yeah. brought of the three IRA people who were shot and killed by the SES regiment. And the reason the British government were found guilty was because of the lack of planning and control. It wasn't the actual um, force that was used, the, the, the soldiers used the force they were training within the model they were used, but it was the planning and control of that force by the government that resulted in the failure or the breach of Article 2. If what you're saying is right, then potentially we've got that, that, that um, situation to arise again. Cool. Correct, yeah. And if, um, if they're coming under UK law and legislation and you apply the Health and Safety at Work Act, then what needs to happen is um, a, a full risk assessment process needs to be done for the role of a maritime operative and all the foreseeable um, risks are addressed. And, and as you know, a lot of them can be addressed with, with training. Um, because at the minute, they're only getting trained in force with a lethal outcome. Right. You know, it, it, it is foreseeable, of course, for an unarmed person to um, climb on board the ship. That's foreseeable. So the company that, that employ these guys, in my opinion, are legally bound to give them training to counteract that as a foreseeable risk. So, but if we broaden that spectrum out, then, because primarily we're talking about maritime at the moment, anyone who's involved with use of force, be it with firearms in a maritime situation or in an NHS organisation where they're having to control a violent patient or in a school where they're having to control a pupil because educational legislation now has come so they can do that. Fundamentally, they've got to do that legally, which means they have to work with the constraints laid down by law. So if we don't have a clear understanding of the law, or they don't have a clear understanding of the law, and there's no audit trail as to what they've been trained and what they haven't, if they make a mistake, technically, they can be prosecuted for a criminal offence or sued for injury. Absolutely. And, and you, like me, Mark, you know, we've, we've trained many people between us. I, I will not teach any physical skills, any use of force options, unless the, 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 the people that I'm training have got a full understanding of the law relating to use of force. Well, you know my view on that. It's always been ours, which is why, um, with the restraint instructors qualification, the first unit, the unit one, which is 20 hours long, is all legal training. It's all the law, the common law, the criminal the Criminal Justice Immigration Act, human rights legislation, as you well know, because you, you teach and deliver it, it's all in there. And we even cover the health and safety aspects and the risks of using force. We're, and, and now, with your help, we've now included that decision-making model, which is a phenomenal bit of kit and something that all members should have. What we've been discussing, Mark and I, 
yeah, on this issue um, is whether or not you'd be interested in doing this Unit 1. Uh, the Unit 1 is the first unit of the BTEC Level 3 Advanced Law and Physical Restraint Instruction. And as I've already just said to Mark, it's a 20-hour unit. It covers all the law that you need to know in terms of the use of reasonable force, including how to risk manage that use. Um, you run it, what do you think? Yeah, perfect. I mean, the expert witness work that I've done, um, the f some of the first documents that I asked for from a company, um, you know, when I'm dealing with a case that's resulted in an injury or a death, is I want to see the staff safety policy, I want to see the risk assessment for the role, but most importantly, I want to see the documentary evidence of who trained you and, and the credentials of that person. Um, and what the unit does is, is do that. It documents that the, this training has been delivered by credible people that, that give evidence in court. Um, and that gives, um, in the maritime sector, the lads the sound audit trail. Um, worst case scenario, they, sh they use lethal force and legal proceedings follow. That they, they are the documents that someone like me would ask for. Yeah, uh, and a good thing about this unit as well is the, the lawyers we've had involved with it. They provide advice for it, but we have on video. So when people do this unit, they'll get it straight from the mouth of Gary Slapper, who's the professor of law at the Open University, right to the Times. Michael Mansfield QC, who most police forces um, fear and dread with a passion. And of course, John Wadden, who used to work with the Independent Police Complaints Commission. Uh, they've all had an input onto this. And as part of the structure of this award, we'll give them video access via an online system to exactly what the lawyers are saying, and that can't but help, and I think it'll be pretty cool. But what I think is good about the award is that um, it's a platform then for other tr other um, use of force training to be bolted on, because you can, you can evidence that the person has got a knowledge in the law and legislation relating to use of force. So then, for example, if they want to learn how to use a piece of equipment, handcuffs, batons, firearms, it can all be bolted on with the underpinning knowledge of the, of the law. And like I said before, I, w I wouldn't teach somebody how to use a set of handcuffs unless they've got a sound, documented un understanding of the, of the law in the first place. Yeah, and the, and the good thing about the unit, the unit certificate they can get, is that it's written to a national occupational standard. Mm -hmm. So we have a formal assessment process of learning and assessment, uh, which can primarily be done by distance learning, um, and which will give them once they've completed it, a, a certificate in the law in relation to use of reasonable force and how to manage that risk. So, yeah, cool. Anyway, if you're interested in um, this unit, if you are a use of force trainer, whether it's maritime security or, or whether you work in the NHS or in care and education, then we're going to make this available for you. It's going to be available on a limited basis, I've got to say. We're, we're going to test the water with this one. It's never been done before, but Mark and I have worked on this collectively. We think it's a, a very good platform for you to have a good sound underpinning knowledge or you may already have that knowledge and at least it's going to formalise that for you so keep watching very shortly we'll, we'll bang the offer out to you but like I said it's going to be on a limited basis so first come first serve but hopefully you'll enjoy it. Thanks mate. Thanks.